man's only sin. What I want to emphatically present is the only sin in the Bible. It appears to be quite strange that the way man looks at sin is totally different from the way God looks at it. It is a pity today that in preaching the gospel, people often incorrectly present the principle of sin. Man is in need of a savior because he has sinned. If there were no sin, there would be no need for a savior. But what is the sin which man has committed? The word sin is a generic term. You have your sin, and I have mine. If we therefore do not commit the same sin, then why do we all need the same Savior? The Bible from the beginning to the end lays stress on but one sin. Whether a person receives eternal life or perishes depends on his attitude towards this one sin. His standing before God is determined by his treatment of this sin. The Bible does not stress tens of thousands of other sins. Even were all the tens of thousands of these other sins resolved, you would still be a sinner if this one particular sin were not solved in your life. What, then, is this sin? It is a controversy between man and God, that man does not have a proper relationship with God. Although lying, pride, and jealousy are all sins, these are merely bits and pieces of this one particular sin. What according to the Bible causes man to perish is but one particular sin. You may not commit many other sins, but if you commit this one, you are qualified indeed to descend to hell. We may not commit adultery or gamble, but we doubtless have committed this one sin, which is the lack of a proper relationship with God. There may be a clean man or woman, but he or she has committed the sin of having a controversy with God. We have all committed this same sin of having broken the proper relationship with God. We are born sinners. The inventory of sin is so massive that it is beyond counting. You may happen to have not committed any of the numberless sins in the world, yet there is one sin you cannot deny having committed, which is that you have broken off your relationship with God. Without Christ today, you are indeed a sinner. What is sin? It is nothing less than man standing in a position of being unable to commune with God. To sin is basically to stand in a position opposed to God. Sin is more than murder or pride or jealousy, it is having a controversy with God. Let me use an illustration to show how important such sin is. Suppose there is a man who is married and has children. He also has in his big family parents, brothers, and sisters. He is working, and naturally he has his colleagues where he works. He has in addition many relatives and friends. In his own home he may be a good husband and father. At his work he may be most diligent and faithful. He is loyal to his friends and does good towards his relatives. In fact, he is good in every respect. He does not smoke or drink, he tells no lie and is not jealous. He keeps all the commonly accepted moral codes. He is a real gentleman. Nonetheless, he has one peculiar aversion, he hates his parents. He is agreeable with everybody else except with them. He is courteous to all save his parents. He is easy on everyone but them. It can be said that he is moral and good to all, that he has not committed any of the gross sins which other people usually have done. Even so, he has committed a great sin, that of maintaining an improper relationship with his parents. He has not committed sins commonly perpetrated, yet he has committed this one grave sin of having a controversy with his parents. Let me say that such is the position of the world of men today. When asked if they are sinners, many will answer back, How have I sinned? According to the human viewpoint, these who reply in such why fashion are no doubt gentlemanly, moral, and polite. They seem also to follow their conscience well. Nevertheless, each of these people needs to be asked this question, Has anything bad happened between you and God? True, you have maintained a good relationship with friends and relatives, you are moral and courteous, but what about your relationship with the Heavenly Father? 
keep in mind that besides your wife, children, friends, and relatives, there is also God above towards whom you must relate. Hence, we may accurately say that man is a sinner for no other reason than his having an improper relationship with God. It is not because he has killed people or his conscience is too black that he is constituted a sinner, he is such basically because he stands at enmity with God. He is a sinner because he has no spiritual intercourse with God. Man can make excuses by saying he has not committed this sin or that sin, but there is one particular sin which he must have committed. We each may put forth excuses to explain away a hundred and one other sins, but we cannot deny we have in fact committed this one sin. It is this sin that makes you and me sinners. Today I would not ask concerning how you behave at home. Possibly you are a good member of your family. Neither would I ask if you are at peace with your brothers. Perhaps you have indeed not sued any of them because of some inheritance conflict. Nor would I ask you how you treat your colleagues at work. Your colleagues may well in fact respect and think highly of you. And I would not ask if you are a good citizen. Perhaps you are a very good one, for you are loyal, submissive to authority, and faithful in paying taxes. But I would ask you today if something is wrong in your relationship with God. What is your relationship with Him? God will not ask you how you behave towards your wife, brothers, and colleagues. He will not even ask you whether you have killed someone or committed arson. He will only ask you about your relationship with Him. You may not have created many other problems present in the world, but if this universally common problem of man's relationship with God is not resolved, you are nonetheless a sinner. The Bible teaches plainly concerning this sin. Let us be clear as to just exactly how sin first entered this world. It did not enter in the form of murder, nor a lie told by someone calling his wife his sister. It did not enter the world by a man having taken another's wife or having sent a rival to the battlefront to die. Nor did it enter through fornication or gambling or pride or jealousy. No, sin first entered the world quite simply by man having eaten a piece of fruit. Of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, commanded God of Adam, Thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. We will not touch upon the reason that lay behind God's word here. We will merely observe that man overturned what God had commanded. If the Creator God orders me not to eat, then I shall not eat, otherwise I contradict and oppose God. Now as soon as Adam had eaten the forbidden fruit, he quickly hid himself among the trees of the garden since he had placed himself in a posture of fearing to see God. What, then, is sin? Sin is simply having a wrong relationship with God. Sin is standing in an improper position towards God. We are all familiar with the story of the prodigal son in Luke 15. What was the sin he committed? Many would say, look, the younger son took his share of his father's property and wasted it in riotous living, and thus he later became a prodigal. Let me say, however, that the day on which he received his inheritance into his hands was when he became a prodigal, even though he was a wealthy man at the moment. He became a prodigal not because he had failed, wasted all his inheritance, and fallen into feeding swine. The moment he left his father to go into a far country was the moment he became a prodigal. When he stepped out of his father's door, that was when he became a prodigal. His one fault that made him a prodigal was to leave his father. Yet suppose this younger son had become even more wealthy rather than poor abroad. Suppose that instead of having five thousand, he now had ten thousand dollars. His father could still not have said to him, Well done, good and faithful son. Even if he had become ten times richer, the younger son still remained a prodigal. Hence the problem today is not whether one has spent all, or has resorted to feeding swine for a living, or has ended up hungry and in rags. The real problem is, where are you? Is there something wrong in your relationship with the Heavenly Father? If you are in a far country, you must have become a prodigal son also. 
But when the prodigal in the biblical account came to his senses, he did not plan to work hard and accumulate money so that he might turn from beggar to rich man. What did he say to himself when he was inwardly awakened? I will rise and go to my father, and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight. He did not return just to satisfy his stomach with food and to have shoes and clothes to wear. He said, I will rise and go back to my father. What is meant by being saved? It means to have restored a proper relationship with God. What is eternal life? To have eternal life is to have a right relationship with God the Father. This is life eternal, that they should know thee the only true God, and him whom thou didst send, even Jesus Christ.